My mother-in-law, who lives with me, snores down my housework, giving me scores for every single thing I do. When I put my pride and joy, stew, in front of her. Stew today. No, what is this arrangement? Stew should be served in an oval dish, and only a salad as an accompaniment. It's so poor. If you have a problem with it, you don't have to eat it. I swallowed those words and replied, I'm sorry. On the other hand, my daughter started to eat it with a smile. I love Mama's stew. The ingredients are so gooey. My mother-in-law, however, is still complaining in detail. Eventually, she brought the stew to her mouth, chewed for a while, and then smiled wickedly. I know you wanted to add various secret flavors to make it taste more complex, but to tell you the truth, it tastes bad. I give today's stew a score of 20. It was at this point that I reached my limit. Who the hell do you think you are, giving detailed scores to my chores and making fun of them? I had to say something to make me feel better. When I was about to open my mouth, my daughter stopped eating and said, Then, your score is minus 100 points, Grandma. What? After this, my foolish mother-in-law burst into tears. My name is Haley, 35 years old. I am a housewife with side job raising a six-year-old daughter. I used to work for a major restaurant chain and have been busy working at the head office. My main job was public relations, and I was in charge of commercials and advertisements in magazines. When I was in my mid-twenties, I met William, a salesman from a major advertising agency who came to my company. William made a fierce approach to me, and we eventually began dating. He was good at his job, had a good sense of humor, and took good care of me during our relationship. With him, I knew I could continue to live happily supporting each other. I was convinced of that. Then, after two years of dating, he proposes to me. Haley, marry me. Let's make a home where we can always smile. Yes, William, let's be happy together. Thus I accepted the proposal and became engaged to William. My parents were happy to see me marry the elite William. Next, we finally went to his parents' house. William's father had already passed away. And his mother-in-law, Mary, lived alone in the family home. It's nice to meet you. My name is Haley, and I am dating William. With that, I bowed and handed her a gift I had prepared at the entrance. Nice to meet you, too. I am Mary, William's mother. I'll take your souvenir. My mother-in-law, with a smile on her face, took the paper back from me, peeked into it, and said, Oh, it's a confectionery. I'm used to formal sweets for such occasions. What? I'm sorry. Then William interrupted. Mom, you're being rude even though you got it all this time. Haley, you don't have to worry about it. I was a little depressed, thinking that I had made a mistake from the very beginning. I moved to the living room and faced my mother-in-law again. Once again, this is Haley. I'm thinking of marrying her. As William said this, my mother-in-law looked me over from top to bottom. Well, you're well-dressed. Your face and body shape are okay. I was taken aback by her comment, which sounded as if she was setting a price on me. Well, William is of marriageable age. I'll allow you to marry. Oh, thank you very much. He's my only son whom I raised with great care, so please take good care of him. By the way, Haley, after you get married, you will quit your job and come into our family, right? What? No, I intend to continue working. This was something that William and I had discussed and decided beforehand. I felt that my work was worthwhile. And he, of course, said I could continue. However, my mother-in-law's face contorted when she heard this. Huh. Then what are you going to do about the household? Well, I'll help out and share that with her. William answered. But my mother-in-law was not convinced. It's so strange. William has to work outside the home and do all the housework. I've been a stay-at-home mom since I got married, and it's kept our family running smoothly. Seeing my dismay, William told my mother-in-law firmly, You have an old-fashioned way of thinking, mom. Nowadays, it is normal for men to do the housework even if they work together. I think that's fine with me, too. And more importantly, we've decided that, so don't tell me what to do. But, you know, 
My mother-in-law seemed unconvinced to the end. However, William pushed through, and the day was somehow settled. I'm sorry, my mom has old-fashioned values and is naive. I know she must have surprised you. Yeah, a little bit. She's overprotective of me, too, and I'm hoping she'll change. But after we get married, we'll live apart and I don't need to get involved with him much. Thus, William and I registered our marriage. We had a wedding, rented a three-bedroom apartment in LA, and began living together. Our married life was happy for a long time. William helped me with the housework as he had declared, and we enjoyed going to the movies and going on dates on holidays. I met my mother-in-law only once after the wedding, at Christmas. Even then, I felt we did not share the same values, but I somehow managed to pass it off. Eight months after the wedding, I found out I was pregnant. Yay! I'm so excited. I wonder if it's a boy or a girl. William is so hasty. Seeing him overjoyed made me happy, too. I knew that I would be able to cooperate with him in raising our child. I was very much looking forward to the birth of our child. My parents are busy running their own business in the countryside. Since I could not have a home birth, I decided to raise my child in my own home. Eventually, I give birth. The baby was a sweet little girl, and we named her Grace. I received a call from my mother-in-law saying, It's too far to come to my house, and I can't wait to see my grandchild's face, so I'll come over there after you get out of the hospital. We agreed. Soon I was discharged from the hospital. I was about to go up to her house with Grace in my arms when I saw my mother-in-law at the door. Mother-in-law, you have already arrived. What? That package. My mother-in-law obviously had a large baggage. Oh. I'll stay here for a while and take care of the baby. What? You don't have to feel sorry for me. I'm here to take care of you. I had expected her to leave in a day, so I hurriedly looked at William's face. Hey, Mom, you can't just decide to do that. You have to leave tomorrow. Well, what a terrible thing to say. I thought it would be hard on Haley and I also wanted to get in touch with my grandchildren. To my mother-in-law's surprise, she began to wail. I was anxious about raising a child for the first time, and I felt that I could not disrespect my mother-in-law's feelings. It's okay, William. It will help me too. Mother-in-law, please take care of me. Haley, are you sure about this? Then my mother-in-law, her crying face was gone, and with a nonchalant look on her face, she said, of course it's okay. Then, let's go inside right away. Let's go inside and show me my little granddaughter. Seeing my mother-in-law like that, I was already beginning to regret my choice. My mother-in-law then started to nag me about every single thing I did to raise my child. She told me to breastfeed my baby and to use cloth diapers, forcing her old child-rearing methods on me. Grace, you look so cute today. Your mommy is no good. She really loves Grace. Life with my mother-in-law was stressful for me after the birth. Three months later, when my mother-in-law finally went home, I felt as if I could finally breathe. After that happened, I really started to have a hard time with my mother-in-law. That is why I kept the distance between us at a casual level, only returning home for long vacations and giving her gifts at milestone occasions. Time passed, and Grace turned six years old. One day, just as she was about to enter elementary school, William said to me, You know, Haley, my mom has sprained her leg badly. What? Is she okay? Yeah, but it's interfering with her daily life, so she wants us to keep her with us until she gets better. Well, if that's the case, I couldn't say impossible in front of the troubled William, and I answered like that. Inwardly, I was feeling heavy. I thought I would have to live with my mother-in-law again, albeit for a short time. My mother-in-law loved her grandchild. But she still talked down to me and imposed her old values on me. Remembering my mother-in-law like that, I felt heavy at once. Thus, the day my mother-in-law arrived, she was all smiles. But to my surprise, she showed up with the movers. Mom, what's the meaning of this? You brought all this stuff with you. My mother-in-law answered without hesitation. I sold that house. From now on, please live with me. What? To her surprise, my mother-in-law told us that she was going to move out of the house she was living in and move in with us at our house. William and I were a bit taken aback by this, 
but we could not kick out my mother-in-law, who had nowhere else to go. My mother-in-law took a presidents in the open guest room, saying, I'll make it my room. Oh, Grace, it's been a long time. From now on, your grandma will live with you. You can depend on me a lot. Then my daughter's face lit up. I see. I'm so happy to have grandma here. Every time she saw Grace, my mother-in-law bought her sweets and toys and spoiled her. Grace also seemed to be attached to my mother-in-law. Seeing her like this, I decided that I was ready to live with my mother-in-law. Two weeks after I started living with my mother-in-law, William suddenly said something outrageous to me. Haley, I'm sorry. We're short on staff at the branch office, so I've been transferred out for about six months. What? Branch office? Where? It was a place about three hours away from our house by train. I'll be working alone for a while, leaving my family behind. Oh no. Nevertheless, he could not go against the company's decision. After a while, William really did go to work at the branch. Immediately after sending my husband off, my mother-in-law told me, Well, from now on, I'm going to go strict with you. You better brace yourself. Then my life was hell. My mother-in-law did not do any housework, even though she was at home, if that were all. She would complain about my housework. She said I didn't clean well, that it was insane to do laundry at night. I tried my best not to listen to her. But one day, she said something I couldn't understand. Haley, there's dust on the curtain rail. My mother-in-law even went to the trouble of preparing a stepladder to check and said such a thing. I'm sorry. I'll do it next time I have time. I was also irritated and answered like that. Then my mother-in-law told me. I guess the score of cleaning the living room is 40 points. What a wife you are, using work as an excuse to skip housework. What? You didn't even score 30 points as a housewife. I really wonder why William chose such a person. After that, my mother-in-law continued to give points to my housework and child care. The laundry is neatly folded, but the ironing is not done properly, so that is 35. You are not a good mother if you don't take care of her daughter's homework, so that is 10. My frustration grew as I was told such things on a daily basis, but still, she is William's mother. Grace loves her grandmother too. I told myself that, and managed to bear it. Then one day, I was making stew at Grace's request. My stew is delicious, I think, because I used several secret ingredients. It was also Grace and William's favorite menu. When it was time for dinner, I put the stew and salad in front of my mother-in-law and Grace. As soon as she sat down, my mother-in-law started complaining as usual. Stew today? What is this arrangement? Stew should be in an oval plate. And only salad as an accompaniment. It's so poor. If you have a problem with it, you don't have to eat it. I swallowed those words and replied. I'm sorry. On the other hand, my daughter started to eat it with a smile. Let's eat. I love mom's stew. It's so rich with all those ingredients. Grace started to eat with a smile, but my mother-in-law was still complaining in detail. What's with the way you cut these vegetables? They're too big. You don't even think about the people who eat them. Mother-in-law, please eat it soon. It's getting cold. She took the stew and put it in her mouth. After chewing for a while, she smiled wickedly. I know you wanted to add various hidden flavors to make it taste more complex. To put it bluntly, it tastes bad. I give today's stew 20 points. At this point, I reached my limit. Who the hell do you think you are? Giving detailed scores to people's chores and making fun of them. I had to say something to make me feel better. Just as I was about to open my mouth. Grace stopped eating and said, Then, your score is minus 100 points, Grandma. Huh? My mother-in-law's eyes widened. She probably didn't expect her adored grandchild to say something like this to her. Hey, Grace. What are you talking about? You complain about what Mom makes and give her points for cleaning and doing the laundry, don't you? So, Grace, I'm going to give you points for Grandma, too. Grandma gets minus 100 points. Grace? That's enough. My mother-in-law scolded my daughter, but Grace kept a cool face. Because mom's stew is delicious. 
I can see that you want to be mean to mom. Grace, I don't like you. I don't want to be with you. The next moment, Grace dropped the bomb. Besides, a family is supposed to live by helping each other and saying thank you to each other. Isn't that what you said? Right, Dad? What? The next moment, Grace pulled out a tablet. There, William, whose face was bright red, was projected on the screen. He said this from the screen. I was actually on a video call with Grace. I said I couldn't eat it but I wanted to see Haley stew, and Grace left the line open. William told her so matter-of-factly, and my mother-in-law's face turns pale. It's not like that, William. This is a misunderstanding. Shut up. I've heard a lot of things from Grace. I heard that you've been giving points to Haley for every single chore she does and snoring at her. I didn't think that was possible, but I was convinced it was true because I could hear our conversation earlier. Hi, hi. William yelled at her, and my mother-in-law trembled with him. William continues. Grace is right. You're the worst mother-in-law I've ever seen. No, that's not even enough. William. If it's going to be like this, we should have never moved in with you. I'm coming back tomorrow for an emergency. I'll kick you out then, so pack up your stuff before the end of the day. With these words, William hung up the phone. Silence fell in the dining room. H. Haley. I'm sorry. I apologize. Please intercede for William. I don't want to leave here. I smiled at my mother-in-law with teary eyes and said to her, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a family member with a person who is minus 100 points. Come on, mother-in-law, let's pack up your belongings. I'll help you. Grace and I stared at the sobbing mother-in-law with cold eyes. The next day, William really did come home from the location of his workplace. He had already arranged for a moving company, and my mother-in-law's belongings were removed one after another. I've rented a weekly apartment for a month. You need to decide where you will live during that time. We're going to cut you off from us, so don't contact us. Grace also said, bye-bye. Minus 100 points, Grandma, she told her with a sunny face. Thus, my mother-in-law left her house in tears. After that, my mother-in-law rented an apartment in her hometown and went back to living alone. She will probably grow old in solitude without the support of her son's family. Still, I think my mother-in-law deserved it. I, on the other hand, have been able to return to a peaceful family life. Today is the day that William returns home from his post. Looking forward to it, I think I will make the request it's due.